Scott. Yeah, mate. I've done, I've done these chats in worse places. It's not bad. Not bad. It's pretty good. I wanted to take the opportunity while you were here to talk to you all about carbohydrate intake for athletes, specifically two areas. One is going to be like the pre-race build-up, the pre-race fueling and carb loading, because although um, at Precision Fuel and Hydration, we obviously talk to athletes about that sort of thing, our specialism really is a little bit more in race. So as a nutritionist, you know, when you're communicating carb loading to athletes in the days before race, what are the key points you want them to adhere to? Yeah, I think with our program, we sort of start that 48 hours before. Yeah. So they do a higher intake of carbohydrates on two days before it, and then certainly 24 hours before, they're going for that eight to 10 grams, around eight to 10 grams per kilo body weight. Obviously, there are some individual and personal differences there, yeah, yeah. but that's a really good target for most athletes to be hitting in terms of grams of carbohydrates. So talk to me about like eight to 10 grams of carbs per kilo. I know that's quite a bit. But it's like, a lot. <laughs> but like, talk to me about in terms of like, what's that gonna look like in a meal? What's yeah. a carb loading breakfast? Yeah, I think we don't eat grams and we don't eat carbohydrates yeah. per se, we eat food. So yeah. I think it's a really good question. So minimal fiber. So yeah. think all the healthy foods that you're probably eating on a daily yeah. basis or you should be, they're probably going out the window. So you're yeah. thinking white foods, Kitty cereals are really good. Yeah. Low in fiber, high in carbohydrate, low in density. Yeah. So Rice Krispies, Rice Bubbles, fantastic. Yeah. Pancakes, white bread, fantastic in the morning. You shouldn't forget your protein intake and obviously fat intake as well. Yeah. So things like including some eggs in that yeah. is a good option. Um, moving through, you said that mainly Precision's involved in in-session fueling with their products, but actually I think you can use uh, you can use any product, uh, yeah. but precision you can use. Uh, your carb only product is yeah. a good one. So maltodextrin powder is fantastic yeah. uh, with the com combination of fructose. So in that you can be hydrating. So you could put a hundred grams of uh, maltodextrin or maltodextrin fructose in a bottle, yeah. slowly drink that between breakfast and yeah. lunch, give yourself another 100, 120 grams of carbs. Yeah. Really easy, hydrating plus minimal stress on the stomach because you're drinking it over two hour period. Yeah, it's interesting you say that because the, the it's a relatively new product for us at the moment, it's called the Carb Only Drink Mix. And we designed that with the Lotto Cycling Team to be used for in-race fueling, but found that the guys are using it, they're having supplemental bottles of it for breakfast, and we've started recommending it yeah. to athletes because I'm, and I'm certainly one of those people, like if you put that volume of carbohydrate-based food in front of me, especially the day before a race, I'm a pretty good eater, but it's, I'd find, I find it easier to get it in in liquid form. Well, look, yeah, I'm, if I'm doing a carb load, I'm upwards 700, 800 grams. Like, yeah, it's yeah. a lot of food. So actually using a carbohydrate powder in liquid in some water is actually a really yeah. easy way to get it. I mean, you can still use your, you know, you could use your PF60, to be yeah. honest, if you wanted some extra sodium. It's not something that athletes have to shy away from. I think it's just individual preference, whether it's carbs only, whether it's carbs with some sodium, but it's, it's a really viable a strategy to increase carbohydrate intake in that carb load without you know eating just a hell of a lot yeah and then you go into lunch look for a lot of athletes whether they're pro age group it's rinse repeat yeah. what you ate for breakfast might be what you eat for lunch yeah. afternoon snack dinner it doesn't have to be gourmet it's just got to get the job done again focusing on white food so you might move into again boiled boiled white rice is fantastic yeah you can make it savory you can make it sweet so you could add maple syrup to yeah. that. Again, low density, two tablespoons gives you extra 30 grams of carbs. Wow. Yeah, Three yeah. tablespoons, extra 45. Put that over rice, a little bit of milk, whatever milk, whether it's a nut milk or whether it's real milk, put yeah. that over a bit of yogurt. Um, you're good to go. And again, that yogurt choice might not be your healthy yeah. yogurt choice. It might be, you know, a Yoplait or I probably shouldn't say Yoplait, but anything with the added sugars in yeah, it or yeah. added carbohydrates is actually a great choice. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. So yeah, the normal rules of healthy eating go out the window. Yeah, to, which is why we extent. don't like to focus on foods being healthy or good or yeah, bad yeah. because it depends on the context. I think those bad foods are actually the good foods for, for that context. For that context and that because purpose. Because if we're talking about the science for a moment with carb loading, what you're trying to do fundamentally is absorb as much carbohydrate as you can, get it into the bloodstream, get it shuttled out to the muscles to load up the glycogen stores. Yep. Right? And the liver. Yeah. So yeah. fructose does become important yeah. because that will help load the liver. Yeah. So you can eat fruit as well. Yeah. I think a lot of athletes shy away from fruit, but look, including bananas, high glycemic fruits, yeah. 
um, some pineapple, mango, things like yeah. that are actually really enjoyable to eat. It yeah. doesn't have to be, you yeah. know, a yeah. terrible feeding day. Yeah, yeah. Going into pasta, so I tend to prefer rice. I think it's easier to get large volumes of rice in than it is white pasta. That's yeah. my preference. Um, I mean, you, you talk to a lot of people about a carb load and they're like, yeah, yeah, I have a big bowl of pasta the night before. And it's like, no, that's a carb meal. Yeah. That is not a carbohydrate load. No, you probably yeah. got 80 grams of carbs yeah. in. You might have another 700 to get in yeah, and yeah. they're like, oh, okay. Yeah. I missed so, it. so the load, basically the load period is 48 hours out is one of the things I'm taking from this. It's kind of low, lower on fiber, lower on fat, higher on simple carbs. Simple carbs. But also it's like, rinse and repeat through the day, I think is the phrase you use. You don't have to suddenly like have all this variety of meals and things like find what works for you and Correct. stack it up. Absolutely. One, one last question on the on the carb loading. What what about the morning of? Because people, lot people have different attitudes towards a meal before a race. Talk about the volume and timing of that. Yeah, look, again, if you talk specifics, somewhere probably between two and three grams per kilo of body weight yeah. of carbohydrate. Um, Look, as a minimum, I think, depending, if you're doing a 70.3 or iron, and minimum you're probably aiming for is at least 100 grams of carbs. Yeah. Now, we tend to recommend carbohydrates with some fiber at that point in yeah. time. There is, um, there is good evidence to support carbohydrates will act as heat protective to the gut lining okay, under yeah. heat stress. So yeah. some form of carbohydrate in the morning, A, is good in terms of yeah. topping up muscle glycogen, liver glycogen, um, blood uh, sugars but also I think in terms of potentially providing some protection to the gut lining once it gets under that heat stress, I think makes sense, including protein. So we, we often go for an overnight protein yeah. oats, top that up maybe with, again, an extra fluid um, source of carbohydrates. Yeah. So whether that's maltodextrin or a combination of maltodextrin and fructose yeah. in the morning, your electrolytes, depending on what your preference is, maybe a, a banana with yeah. that, and yeah. you're good to go. Yeah. You know, again, keep it simple, toast, uh, people, whether you go for whole meal or white toast in the morning, I don't think it matters too much as long as, again, you're getting that carbohydrate amount in. Yeah, and a little bit of trial and error like there always is to like figure this out, do it before some hard training sessions and some yeah. smaller races. Yeah, look, I mean, in the, in the fuel in program, that's all green meals, the way we depict it is green meals. But your point about practicing, I cannot emphasize that enough. Like always, we're always recommending practice your race day meal. Yeah. Don't leave it until race day, until you go, oh, yeah. what am I gonna eat now? Yeah. It's like, you've gotta know you feel exactly comfortable with that. You can get it, you can make it, you can eat it, and feel comfortable at whatever it is, three or four in the morning.